Good evening, everybody. Hope everybody's doing well. I wanted to do a follow-up on my video that I wrote, that I wrote, <laughs> that I recorded on the WHO, the world, um, let's see, the World Health Organization. And it was, let's see, it was a couple of days ago, it was before Mikey, and I was going to follow up on it right away, and then, you know, all these other things happened. It was um, the Invisible Hands of the Who in States, and it's the one where the thumbnail is a map of the United States. And you can see green, black, and white areas. So I will post a link to it in this video. And that was on February 3rd. So one of our subscribers, thank you, sent me a video. And then another person actually sent me the same video today. And I'm going to play it for you. But before I do, please hit the thumbs up. This is Lorraine Alternative Homesteading. I want to give you a little bit of background on the video that I'm going to um, present to you here. It's Dr. Meryl Nass. She explains how the WHO's proposed pandemic treaty is going to impact everybody. Now, just a little background on Dr. Meryl Nass. She was targeted by her profession because she speaks out against the alternatives to certain treatments. She's also appeared with Dr. Mercola, who you know most people know as an alternative physician. So I'm going to read you some little information on Dr. Merrill Nass. And my laptop is really slow because it's been attacked by these criminals. She's, um, it says, um, let's see if there's a date here. A woman describing pandemic plans for a soft coup is not a WHO representative. So just know that the video that I'm going to play on the World Health Organization that she's speaking at, she is not part of the WHO. So, um, this is, um... AP. It was published on September 1, 2023 by Melissa uh, Golden. So the woman in the video does not work for the WHO, nor was she speaking on its behalf. A spokesperson for the, Na uh, the United Nations Agency told the Associated Press. The spokesperson also confirmed that WHO is not developing any such plans to take away human rights as described in the video. Now this is dated September 1, 2023, and we know damn well that that is false, okay? So what I'm going to air for you is extremely alarming, but let me read to you some information on Dr. Nass. And she won this lawsuit, by the way. The Maine Medical Licensure Board extends a suspension for Dr. Merrill Nass because of the jabby wabby. She's a jabby wabby skeptic. And they ordered her to pay a $10,000 fine. Well, she ended up reversing this. But this is what they, they do to physicians and people that don't go along to get along. They threaten to take away her license. So the main board of licensure and medicine said Tuesday that NAS must attend professional development and submit to random reviews to get her license back. They were doing the same thing to Dr. Jordan Peterson because they don't like what he says on TikTok. So they want to take away his license to practice. 
So the state regulatory board voted Tuesday to extend a suspension of medical license held by an outspoken doctor who has become the cause celebre for uh, jabby wabby skeptics saying she violated multiple board rooms rules while treating some of her patients with the 19. Ellsworth physician Merrill Nass, they say, this, they're claiming this, they, that she failed to meet several standards of care while treating three patients. Three, three. Meanwhile, they've unalived millions of people across the globe with this wonderful elixir. So among the allegations are that Ness improperly prescribed an anti-parasitic drug, the ivermectin, hydrochloroquine, for the treatment and prevention of the 19, and she knowingly lied to another healthcare professioner, professional to obtain the prescription, and that she failed to keep proper medical records and documentation. So they, the board discussed and voted on the terms of the decision and order on the final days of NASA's adju adju uh, adjudicatory hearing, September 9th, ending a hearing that spanned seven days and nearly 50 hours over 11 months, the initial complaints against NASA were filed in two, late 2021. Could you imagine all the money they spent on trying to quiet this woman? Six board directors present at the September hearing voted unanimously to find NASA's actions were grounds for discipline in eight of the 13 counts against her, including four counts related to patient care and competence to practice medicine, three related to medical record keeping, and one related to truth telling and misrepresentation. Is this amazing? That a whole board, a licensure board, a medical board, have no problem going after one of their own because they just don't like what she says. Isn't that amazing? They did the same thing to Jordan Peterson. So anyway, Dr. Merrill Nass in July of 2023 claims victory in making a spectacle of the investigation. I won't go into all those details, but she warred against them and she was sanctioned. The board extends her, they suspend her, they extend suspension and she rules in the end. She ended up suing them over free speech rights in August of 18 of 2023. She sues them. So anyway, I want to give you a little information of her bio. So now, this is the website Alliance for Human Research Protection. Advancing voluntary informed consent to medical intervention. Now this is a website. This is not... Medical advice, this is for educational purposes only. I'm reading from a website on Dr. Meryl Nass, N-A-S-S. She's an MD. And let me read to you a little bit about her background and how egregious it was for this stupid board of licensure to try to attempt to suspend her license. And this is, folks, why? I mean, I've had people on course say, oh, well, you're not a licensed psychologist. You couldn't pay me to be licensed. Licensure means you have to go along to get along with what these criminals want you to do and say. That ain't ever happening. So anyway, Dr. Meryl Nass is an internal medicine physician and activist with expertise in anthrax and bioterrorism. Her interest is in prevention, investigation, amelioration, and safe 
and effective medical response. Her expertise and experience includes treating patients with Gulf War syndrome and adverse effects from the anthrax vaccine. Anthrax, big deal. She has raised cogent critiques about the deficient response to the recent Ebola outbreak, unfounded panic about the so-called measles epidemic, global jabby-wabby safety issues, medical ethics, and corruption in the medical industrial military complex. <laughs> you gotta love her, right? This is one doctor you gotta love. Dr. Ness tries to provide a balanced medical approach to such, such issues. She analyzes medical crises by digging into the hidden underlying facts and details, often finding the media reportage to be skewed by following a biased corporate and government agency lenses whose perspective serves a financial and or political agenda. Uh, see, this is what happens when you speak the truth. They try to suspend your license. Yes, Dr. Nass fills in the crucial undisclosed details and provides a deeper nuanced analysis. She has provided testimony to seven congressional committees and her work has been mentioned in 25 books. See Dr. Ness's video interviews with Dr. Joseph Mercola about anthrax and anthrax jab on YouTube. Her YouTube interview with Gary Knoll, PhD, on the jabby wabby safety and corruption. And there's an interview with James Corbett on the anthrax letters. In 1992, Dr. Ness identified the world's largest anthrax outbreak as an act of biological warfare. It occurred during the Fodesian Civil War between 1978 and 1980. It affected only the black Rhodesians and stopped spreading with the end of the war. This was the first scientific investigation of any epidemic that demonstrated the epidemic could not be due to natural causes. For more information, read here. Her work was cited by the Royal Society and in the book Plague Wars and the BBC documentary Panorama by Tom Mangold and Jeff Goldberg. She created a new methodology for investigating and distinguishing between natural epidemics and biological warfare events. Woman's Brilliant, 2001, she wrote articles and was interviewed by all five major U.S. media regarding the anthrax letters, ways to manage anthrax spore contamination, so it's a spore, and how to better investigate the anthrax letters case. She consulted for a World Bank affiliate, the Inter-American Development Bank, about responding to bioterrorism. And she testified before the Government Reform Committee on the Medical Response to Bioterrorism a month after the anthrax letters events. She consulted for the Director of National Intelligence in 2008 regarding the prevention of domestic bioterrorism. So it goes on and on and on and on and on and on. And she studied the Gulf War Syndrome, on and on. And she's got internet articles and citations. Let's see. Well, some of them I can't really mention because it all has to do with the jabbies, uh, on pertussis, her testimony on exemptions. Um, the CDC is not making prudent jabby wabby recommendations. She, she's a warrior. She is a medical truth warrior. Okay, so now let's go to her speaking. at the WHO and their proposed pandemic treaty. 
And the idea is to... Wait, let me start over. And the idea is to create a whole new set of laws and ignore the existing human rights laws and other laws under the pretext of pandemic preparedness and the biosecurity agenda. The WHO is developing through all its nations, but with the WHO directorate in the United States in charge, a pandemic treaty and amendments to the existing international health regulations that will remove the human rights protections currently um, embedded in the IHRs, will enforce surveillance, censorship, get rid of freedom of speech, require governments to censor and only push a single narrative. Also, we will be sub subject, if, if they can make this work, to vaccines developed in 100 days, which the organization CEPI is planning to do. And one of the people who founded CEPI was Jeremy Farrar, who is now the chief scientist at the WHO to bring this forward. Um, other things that uh, the ch amendments do is to bind the state so they're no longer recommendations but enforceable edicts, uh, provide a liability shield, get rid of intellectual property rights, move supplies from one country to another, um, enforce digital passports, and the director general of WHO can demand that a pandemic or a potential pandemic exists. He can just declare it with no standards and then countries around the world will have to obey. Uh, also, the WHO will tell you what drugs you can and can't use in your nation once a pandemic is declared. Obviously, the budget will increase. Um, One Health is another part of this. One Health is a concept that was created to enable the WHO, with these documents, to take over jurisdiction of everything in the world by saying that climate change, animals, plants, water systems, ecosystems are all central to health. Also embedded in this concept is a peculiar notion that humans are no longer of greater value than animals. Okay, so now, now, um, let me close out this window because there's another... Our lives and so... So along with this, there is a website called StopTheWho.com. I haven't been to it yet. It was just sent to me, so I'm going to type it in. StopTheWho.com Because these people want to take away your rights, your medical rights, the right that you have to treat yourself naturally and dictate to you what you can and cannot take to heal your own body. Now, this website, StopTheWho.com, is um, by James Roguski, R-O-G-U-S-K-I. The top 100 reasons to stop the treaty, stop the amendments, exit the WHO, the World Health Organization's attempt, power grab, it must be stopped. Please help spread the word. Now, this is a year old. It's just that now people are becoming more aware of how severe this is. So this has been going on for a year. This is dated January 5, 2023. You can direct people to this article by sharing this link, stopthewho.com. And let's see, he's got a video on YouTube. I don't know what I'm allowed to post or speak about here. 
So um, I'm just going to continue. One second. The proposed amendment to the international health regulations as originally submitted would make the WHO's proclamation legally binding rather than just advisory recommendations. Do you hear that? Legally binding. What they want to do for your health would be legally binding rather than just advisory advisory recommendations. The proposed amendments seek to institute global digital health certificates, dramatically increase the billions of dollars available to the WHO, and enable nations to implement regulations without respect for dignity, human rights, and fundamental freedoms of people. The agreement, by a simple majority of the 194 member nations, is all that is needed to adopt the amendments. Because as amendments to an existing agreement, neither the advice and consent of the United States Senate nor the signature of the President is likely to be sought. Do you hear that? All they need are the 194 member nations to adopt this amendment because they don't need the consent of the U.S. Senate and they don't need the signature of the president. These proposed amendments are being negotiated in secret without any opportunity for comment by the people around the world. Now, you know, as if you're a targeted person, you know how that is. Secret warrants, secret FISA warrants, secret 702, secret illegal entry, secret searches of your home, secret seizures, secret vandalism, secret weapons testing on your animals to murder them. Secret weapons testings while you're asleep. So this WHO, the World Health Organization, the World Health Organization, like they know what's good for everybody. Now you have to understand, think about this for a minute. There are health issues indigenous to different cultures, different cities, different states, and certainly different countries, depending on the, the local environments. I guarantee that people living in, um, you know, in the tropics, let's say, will not be exposed to the same things as people living in New York City. So how could the WHO decide and recommend something that's legally binding to heal you if you live in different areas? What if you move? What if you're traveling across the country, the world? Who gives them the right to decide what you do with your body. These proposed amendments are being negotiated in secret without any opportunity for comment by the people from around the world. Now, this is going on for a year, folks. This website, StopTheWho.com, has been around for a year. Since January of 2023. And they've been doing this behind our back. Just the way they target innocent people for profit. For weapons testing. Revenge for hire. So please spread the word. This is going to be... This could potentially... Oh, well, let's see. This treaty would give them control 
over pathogens with pandemic potential in the form of a framework convention that would set up an entirely new bureaucracy. It is an absolute abomination. It must be stopped. The proposed amendments to the international health regulations as originally submitted would make the WHO's proclamation legally binding rather than just advisory recommendations. So I'm going to leave it at that. So anyway, I look forward to your questions and comments on this. This is a, another serious topic. Men and women, boys and girls, subscribers, <laughs> newly subscribers, welcome. But anyway, I hope to, I hope to bring the bear, be the bearer of bad news. But yes, this is what's going on in this behind the surface. While we're all focused on who's crossing the border, uh, but we're all focused on the elections and all that. The World Health Organization wants to take away your rights, your health rights. And they don't even need to get the permission of the Senate or the President. Imagine that. But anyway, I'm going to sign off for now. I hope everybody's doing well. Thank you all subscribers. Please hit the thumbs up, get the message out there, and feel free to share.